So you have to stay there. And so, you, so then they bring it up the level, up the challenge, if you like, from shouting things at you, trying to make you laugh, um, flicking things at you, um, you know, uh, trying to intimidate you, you know, saying, yeah, you're an ugly bastard, or your fly is open, you know. And if you react and flunk, you see flunk, you have to start again, right? You have to do it for two hours with no, no reaction, okay? Well, I found myself on the, on this first uh, TR with eyes open. Um, so sitting there and then all this stuff is happening and I'm becoming, supposedly I'm becoming very good at it. And, and I'm so good, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I've switched off from my body I've switched off from everything except just what I'm looking at in front of this, at my twin in front of me. It's all I'm doing. And I don't know if you've ever had the, the, the experience of disconnecting from your body. And it's like all your focus and attention kind of goes right inside your head. And you don't even feel, I, I didn't feel my body. It was quite astounding, really. Um, and I've done this, and you're, this was going on, I don't know, an hour right, or something, maybe more, I don't know what the time frame was. And he says, good, pass. I could hear him, pass. And he goes, great, but I'm just still sitting there. I'm not. And he goes, pass, finished, that's it. He couldn't get me out of it, I was in a trance. I was actually in a trance. I lost volitional control of myself, almost, you know. And eventually, so he, he did he had to shake me or slap me or something like that to get me out of bed. And it was like, my God, and I came out of that. And I was like, he goes, pass. I go, okay, thanks. And, they, they, you know, and this was the thing. You've got this ignorance of psychology, or possibly it's not ignorance. Possibly they know exactly what they're doing. It's, I don't know. I still, to this day, don't know if he knew exactly what he was doing, or but I assume it's more ignorance. Um, because that was very dangerous. That was extremely dangerous, what was going on there, right? Anyway, I was a bit shook up when I go outside and I have a coffee. But I'm supposed to be good at my TRs now, you see. But I found myself, as a result of that, um, anything Scientology said, that was it. It was true and I would, you know, it was something like that. Anyway. We go on a little bit more down the road, in kind of maybe a month, maybe two months, or you know, months or beyond that. And uh, um, I've started by uh, getting some counselling. I think I bought some basic auditing. I had enough money to buy some basic counselling, um, and I find myself um, not doing well at it. Uh, I was doing the Dynetics counselling, and I, I wasn't really doing well at the stuff. And I'm walking out of there. <coughs> a bit frustrated one evening, one night. <clears throat> and I see, I had seen this before, a new book display that was put up uh, on the exit and uh, on the way out. And I look and it says, have you lived, there's a book there, it says, have you lived before this life? I go, have you lived before this life? Have you lived before this life? And something twigs in me, have you lived before this life? What does that mean? Does it mean I've lived before? I take a I look at it and I see incredible stories in there. People who've been Roman soldiers marching across a desert patrol. And it's a weird, so you know, this is a memory of somebody who had been a Roman centurion or whatever it was. And other stories about people in spaceships and fighting, you know, evil psychiatrists. This is where you get into the idea of psychiatrists, this whole track psychiatrist, this evil enemy dark force, you know, and you, there's all these stories that I'm like completely blown away. I said, what is this? It's exciting. Okay. So I'm quite a shook up anyway. I've had, remember, I've had this strange hypnotic experience. Um, I'm being thrown these wild ideas about things. Um, and I'm feeling a bit Odd. I, uh, I couldn't define it, I couldn't describe it, I just was slightly odd. Then I went back home, ended up going to sleep, 
And then I woke up at six o'clock in the morning outside of my head, outside of my head. I'm actually, uh, under my bed it's kind of was a Vila, Vilux window. And I find, uh, it's almost like I, f I felt that I was outside that window looking down on myself, right? This was, I was like, whoa! And it was exciting, but it was frightening. And uh, the moment I realized, oh my gosh, like bang, I'm back in my body. That's what I feel. I kind of wake up with a jolt and I'm really feeling completely unhinged at this point. And uh, I forget now whether uh, Danny and Carl, the, the, her boyfriend, took me down to, to the organization or I just went there because I, I had nothing else that I could find to help to understand what I was feeling. Anyway, I'm down there and then in the, I'm back in the Stuttgart uh, organization and immediately this routine goes into play, you know, where I'm assigned a watcher immediately. I'm put on a specific program, you know, I'm uh, uh, given certain vitamins and, you know, so this very little regimented routine goes into play. Um, I am watched constantly. Um, I had a sense, part of me was saying uh, that I wanted to kill myself, I wanted to kill my body because, you know. But apparently this was all part of this whole routine called out in, which means Hubbard theorized and stated that the, 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 the spirit is separate from, there's a separate entity from the body, right? So you yourself, your awareness and all this is the analytical mind, in fact, that part of you is the spirit, and the spirit operates a body. Okay, and later on you, you know, I learned a bit about it. And Hubbard gave the idea, like, there's the thumb, he says, like, the thumb is the body, and the rest of your body is the spirit. That's kind of the proportions, right? So you've got this huge, so you get this idea of this huge invisible entity that kind of with a, some kind of a beam operates the body like a doll, right? You know, and that's the idea. Um, and that you, most people uh, think that they are in the body and they are one with the body but the Scientology process is supposed to make you be able to be separate from the body and to be able to and that's where you get the idea of time travel and being able to sort of you know at will find yourself in Africa or New York or you know or, or the moon or the stars or whatever and I'd listened to a little tape of Hubbard talking about that about him leaving his body uh, as part of an experiment and visiting Venus and Mars and the moon you know, a little thing, a little experiment that he'd done. And he'd seen, a, while he was on Venus, he saw a fully armed war spaceship with missiles aimed at Earth. You know, this, this sorry, this had just happened just before I had this complete breakdown, if you like, right? And I was swallowed all this stuff, and I was believing this stuff now, okay? But, of course, my reality was unhinged. Uh, something was cracking up, I was cracking up really, I suppose that's the best way to describe it. But it was almost like it was pre-set, it, it was a routine, this was a standard thing that was going to happen. And Scientology knew it. So, uh, uh, so the, the, uh, every single day I'm taken into the organization, taken in, yeah, I am fed, and I, I've got no volition. I've got no personal volition anymore. I really, really don't. And I'm being given a very specific uh, type of counselling. They brought in a high level counsellor from one of the Swiss offices. And a very specific kind of counselling that, look, I don't know what happened in there anymore. I really, really don't. I don't know. I can't remember what was said. I can't remember what was asked of me. All I can remember is the guy sitting there, um, and I'm connected to this e-meter, holding these cans, and I'm being asked these, or being told, or asked, or whatever it was, I don't know. Eventually, I sort of come out of it, but, but I come out of it as a completely convinced Scientologist. And if Scientology said jump, I would jump. And if Scientology said, you know, um, 
shoot something 